Outside of Dylan Rayola, which three Huskers need to have huge games this Saturday for Nebraska to win? The offensive line as a, as a collective unit is probably where I would start. I'll say Lutovsky. Because they have to be able to protect him and run the ball. Lutovsky. Yeah, so if you're going to pick one guy on that line, I'm talk- I'm going to pick the guy that's replacing arguably the best player on that offensive yeah, line. Yeah, you want a big drop Zuka. off. Yeah, so like they gotta be, he's got to be able to hold his own. And then be give them that interior push that made them so successful in the first few well, games. Well, should be able to do it. We've all three met him. He's a mountain. He's one of their bigger linemen. He's 6'6", 320, and he's all of 6'6", 320. He's got the biggest hands of a human I've ever mm-hmm. seen. He, he should be able to move people. So you're asking for three people. Yep. Nayor's one of them. nayor has got to make some plays downfield. That, that, that would really help. Pick a running back. I'll go Dowdell. Dowdell. Dowdell's got a hammer away. He dan- he's got. A- he only had six carries last game. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not suggesting he needs to get 20 carries, but if he gets 12, you get really got to make him count. Mm-hmm. I mean, throw some serious body blows. Set early. the tone. Set the tone. Right? I mean, they seem to be just dead set on this equal distribution plan at running back. Well, three now. It's yeah. da- it's down to three though. Equal yeah. distribution between Ramir Johnson, Dowdell, and Emmett Johnson. And as we ex- established earlier, there was some confusion because there's two Johnsons. I do like Dowdell as early and Emmett Johnson late. And then mix Ramir in there on third downs. He can run the ball too on early downs. But I, it just seems like Dowdell early, Emmett Johnson late makes a lot of sense. All right, next question. So what about a defensive guy? Is there someone on the defense that needs to have a huge game yeah, as well? there is. Or are we um, just going to pick the defensive line? I think you just go to the best player, Ty. Ty. Yeah, make your presence felt. Start it. No one disrupts games more than he does. <clears throat> He's the guy where it starts. He, 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 can, he can ruin the entire plan for Illinois if they can't block him. I mean, they need to force more than one turnover. Last week, just one forced turnover. One forced turnover. You'd like to see that at least two this yep. week. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nebraska's plus three through three games, which is a huge improvement. Which is like but a world improving stat. It's a world improvement, but if you, you, you it, the perspective is Illinois, as we mentioned before, nine turnovers forced by Illinois. It's a huge stat in this game. They have forced nine turnovers and turned it over only once, mm-hmm. plus eight. That is something to watch in this game. Mm-hmm. You can't Illinois if it comes in here and it's plus three, be really tough to beat them. Yep, the cornerbacks are going to take a lot of that, right? Because Billima, what he's going to do is try to get this game to the fourth quarter. That's what Billima does. He's going to try to get it to fourth quarter with a chance to win it. Then it gets scary if, if they're in that position. Mm-hmm. All right, next question: Which game on Nebraska's schedule in the Big Ten is the most important to win? I think, well, this one, take out this one, because I think we'd all say this one. But I, I do think the Purdue game on the road is really big. You after what, over Indiana. Well, after what Notre Dame did, okay. just to go on the road and get road win number one mm-hmm. okay. would be huge. It is homecoming weekend, so there still is expected to be a, a big crowd in West Lafayette. Now, will they get up and go to the game is a better question. Yeah, Purdue's not the most challenging opponent on the schedule, but the fact that it is the first road game. I mean, it's the first time they haven't had the luxury of playing in front of this excellent Memorial Stadium crowd. How do they respond to that? How does Dylan respond to being on the road? Even if it is in a sleepy (laughs) West Lafayette uh, gray sky afternoon, uh, he's, it's going to be the first for him. And again, this is with, with the young quarterback. You want to see the steady evolution. This will be the next test for him. Okay. You got one sip. I, I mean, it's hard for me not to say Indiana right now. I mean, that everybody it talks about the seven and zero. Indiana right now is playing really well. And that might be a big noon kickoff game. Yeah. Yes. At 11 AM. Think about that. Yeah. It's hard for me not to say Indiana. And then Ohio state, probably a big noon kickoff game is, is what I've heard. Wow. So, you might have two 11 a.m. back-to-back big noon kickoffs, which is a big win for our post-game show. <laughs> yes, no it doubt. Is. It is a big win. <laughs> These night games are and rough. That's what matters. Us. All right, next question. What is the most important factor that Nebraska needs to focus on this weekend? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most, God, these are like deep thinking uh, ball security. We just talked about how yes, how Illinois changes games That's with it. their turnovers, and you got a freshman quarterback playing the best defense he's faced this season. So That's it. early down success on defense, yeah, staying Win, on winning schedule. early down on defense. Okay, too. I, I, that, that was a problem last week. They were not winning early downs. Good one. Okay, Good I, one. I yeah, I I think those are one and two, and I think Rob's got one. Um, not again. Illinois, nine turnovers forced. And you know what? Illinois, it's an interesting conversation because Illinois in the past was all man. They're man, man to man all the Ryan time. Ryan Walters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now they're not, as, as, as you pointed out that Rule said. Now they change it up. 
And it is it is going to be challenging for Dylan. But I guarantee you, Dylan was studying it Sunday. Yeah, like starting. basically probably 10 minutes after he got off the podium following the Northern Iowa win, he was in his lab breaking down film of the game and getting a head start in Illinois. He'll, but you're right. It'll test him. It's going to test him. What do you got next, Abby? Okay. Who are Illinois' key players that Nebraska needs to limit? Pat Bryant is the one that comes to mind for me first. He's the big receiver. He's a good receiver. He had 43 catches last year. He's off to a great start this year. He's got 15 catches through three games, okay? Big, big, strong outside receiver. Pat Bryant is the guy that concerns me right off the bat. Well, I think Luke Altmaier, their quarterback, I mean, just everything that he they put on him too, he, he is, you know, if he's hot and converting third downs and getting third downs by run, um, I, I do think that is uh, a notable thing. Um, you know, they have a, they have a really good offensive tackle, Melvin Presley. That will be a matchup to watch because he'll probably be on Ty Robinson. Uh, but he's graded as an eighty five point eight on Pro Football Focus with an eighty nine point one run block rate. Yeah, that's good. Really good lineman. Yeah, and they got tacklers all over the field too. Um, Real good safe. Name? Matthew Bailey leads him with seventeen tackles. So I mean, they just got a lot of like just good athletic. Ball hawk guys that on that side on that defensive side of the ball. Miles Scott in the secondary is another name to watch for them. But all right, uh, Abby, final question here. So Nebraska's 400 sellout streak continues. Number 400 is on Saturday. So what is your favorite memory from the sellout streak? Just that it continued, and even with the COVID year and all the setbacks and the losing on the field, it is really remarkable that we've gotten to this day uh, because. There have been a lot of things that have happened with the play on the field, with what's happened in the world, and just the way people don't go to games in general anymore. You see a lot of empty seats in yep. stadiums everywhere, and for the smallest Power 5 state along or Power 4 along with West Virginia to keep doing what they're doing, it really is remarkable. And you know, I, I, you, I appreciate it even more when I get home and I look at Facebook and I see the number of people I know that go to these games with their family and their friends. It truly is a family reunion every single Saturday that brings people together that otherwise maybe wouldn't even get to see each other. But this team brings this state together for every single Saturday. Favorite memory? Probably when Sim Billy Sims dropped it on the two. Um, and, and I think that was 76. And I was in at the game with my dad. I mean, I want to go to a game where I wasn't covering it, and that that that, that there's very there, those are few and far between. Were you at '94 Colorado? I was. I was not covering it. I was. I was. In, I was. In, I was in the stands for that one. That that was a special day. It was a special day. It was. It was ungodly loud. I mean, yeah. it was, and it was a. It was an 11 a.m. kickoff. ABC. Uh huh. But it was. It was big. But I'm going when, when Billy Sims, the Oklahoma running back, dropped it on the two. Um, that was it was a gray gray day we were sitting under the underhang i think it was missing a little bit so it didn't matter to me although i've been told since then it wasn't missing i swear to god it was missing but somebody told me no simple it wasn't missing it was just gray anyway um go ahead rob i'm with sean and just the the way that it's sustained i need a memory guys. all of these low times like that that is like the overwhelming thought like when i think back i mean memory obviously i've only been part of a handful of these but Impressive. the fact that we've been through such lows mm -hmm. recently with this program and the fans still show up that I think embodies everything that this record is all about. But for a game yeah. 1994 against Wyoming, it was my very first experience inside Memorial stadium. Whoa. Cause I grew, I was born in Iowa, spent my first few years Whoa. of life there, moved here in the early nineties. And the first game I went to was the Wyoming Cowboys. When they came in cool. against Nebraska, Brooke Behringer was a starting quarterback. He, but had a collapsed lung in that game and just wow. gutted it out to That's help right. them win a close yes. game. Yeah. And I sat and we got our tickets through the Wyoming because my dad's from Wyoming. So we had connections there and we sat in the Wyoming section. There was like these old like Wyoming rancher dudes with like trench coats and cowboy hats smoking cigars in front of us. Whoa. What a memory. Like just forever ingrained in my memory. And that was, that was my first taste of the old gray lady. Oh, oh one. That's ne beautiful. Hey, Thanks. oh, one Nebraska, Oklahoma is up okay. there for you I mean, Good one, The Sean. crouch play. Yeah. I mean, the oh, one season in general, you had Notre Dame mm. come to Lincoln and Oklahoma, both college game day games. Hold on. I'd like to amend my answer. The, cr the crouch reception, black flash 41. Is that what they called it? Yeah, 41. What? 
Black Flash. We're going to get killed People for not knowing this. Black Flash, Black Flash Reverse. Black Flash. 41 Black Flash Reverse. Black Flash 41 Reverse is what I think it is. <laughs> Black 41 Flash Reverse. Black <laughs> got 41. All the words just got to get the order. Black hey, listen, that Flash was an reverse. incredible moment. It was. I, it was either the Sims fumble at the two or that. That was an incredible moment. It was. That play, so. God almighty, it was loud. You know how when you see on like Sports Center now, they always have like a little box of the player talk, kind of like our show. Then it shows the play. Uh-huh. That was the first time ESPN ever did that. They came up with the concept. Let's just pop up the Mike Stunts, Eric Crouch box in the corner while the play's happening with them talking about how it all developed. So like Sports Center, that's how they decided it was that play. Nice to have those players talking. It was a one versus two type game. Nice you know, in the BCS pullback then. Massive, massive stage. So that was a pitch. How did it go? It was under a- Collins came around, took a toss, flipped it to stunts, stunts, stunts rolls to his and left. He was a lefty, hits Crouch down the sideline <laughs> in stride, touchdown. Crouch had to catch it. That's the thing. He had to catch the athlete. Ball. Yeah. And stunts was a quarterback recruit. People yeah. forget that. I mean, I saw stunts. He's, he's um, an eye doctor. Yes. He's an eye doctor in Omaha. It was a huge win for Frank. It was a gigantic win. 